Hello everybody and welcome back to the Agostino's English Show, episode number 121 with me, your host Agostino. What's going on? What's really good? How's it going? Yeah, boy, Wednesday morning, crack of dawn in, just got back from running and being on the rowing machine. Row, row, row your boat. God damn, it's been a while, hasn't it? What is it, like a week and a bit, right? Yeah, a week and a bit. Um, a little bit of an enforced break. I wouldn't say it's a busy thing. And I'm not going to give an update because I hate people that give updates and stuff. Like, hey guys, sorry I've been away. Like, no one gives a fuck, right? I'm having a break. Now I'm back. Back to reg regular scheduled programming. But this is the first of two I'm going to do today. I'm going to bang out two podcasts today because I've got a nip off to have a little uh, company breakfast this morning. So I can't spend too long talking to the interwebs. Unfortunately, you know, I'd much, you know that's weird. Isn't it? I'd much rather be sitting here talking into a really shitty webcam, right, into a really shitty USB mic and talking to whoever's listening out there in the interwebs than attending a free breakfast at Breakfast Club, right, at my workplace. But I know well, most people love that sort of stuff, right? They love all that um, gathering around with people and colleagues and having free munches, but it's never really done, it's never really done anything for me. I've been like, eh, not really giving a shit. You know I mean, it's nice, don't get me wrong. It's a nice little uh, company culture add-on, yeah, right? But for the most part, I'd much rather be doing my own thing than getting free food. But I guess if you work in a company that doesn't give you anything, right? I'm sure there's companies that exist. Like when I used to work back in the retail days, you don't get jack shit, right? You don't expect it anyway. It's generally not entitled to it, but the most you get is a kettle and a microwave, right? In the kitchen. You don't get any other treats or these little, you know, things that happen. If it's someone's birthday in retail, they take their friends out who they like. Right, it's not like in office spaces where, like, if someone's birthday, you, you don't know the person, and you already have to, like, you know, what's that word called? Um, you don't know the person, and you have to uh, attend their birthday, quote unquote. You have to celebrate it. Happy birthday to you! Fucking ridiculous, isn't it? It's it's funny that I bet you, right? You probably celebrate people's birthdays more in adulthood than you did when you was, than when you were a child. Because I remember there was a point where my mum stopped taking me to people's birthdays, like, especially family and friends. She's like, look, enough. She, you know, she couldn't afford to buy me, continue buying me outfits. She couldn't be bothered to go to people's houses and catch up with the gossip and talk again and again about the same topics. So she just, like, annexed it. She was like, nah, enough. No more you going to people's houses and, you know what I mean, like, hanging out and talking shit. But I guess for some people, they have the advantage of, like, that never ends. It just always continues. But I never really had that privilege. Uh, but I guess when you're an adult, for some reason... We end up doubling down and we end up celebrating even more people's birthdays. Like, it doesn't end with the people's birthdays when you're an adult. There's always someone's fucking birthday popping up. Um, <coughs> case in point, this week, there's a friend of a friend's uh, 30th happening uh, all the way down in the, in, the, in the depths of West London. Um, I'm inclined to go. I don't really want to go. But again, it's like, you know, it's one, it's one of those things in life where it's a bit of a marker, right? In terms of like where you see someone's, where you see your friendship with this person, I think. Well, not for me, but for the other person, I think. They'll see it more as a way of, like, as an illustration of just how much of a friend you think they are. Or just how much of a friend they are to you. So if you don't attend their birthday, or if you do attend their birthday, they'll remember, oh, yeah, do you remember when you came to my 30th? Like, ah, uh, like, I, I don't remember what I did last week, let alone what I did last year, mate. Do you know what I mean? So I, I do feel inclined to go. I do feel like I should be going. But I think if I feel like that, then probably I shouldn't be. And, um... I'm DJing on Friday too, so the last thing I want to do is um, stay out again on a Saturday. I think I might not do that. Plus, as you can tell, I got a little bit of the sniffles from the old running outside and the blitzy cold. I've got, I have had so many like a uh, neuron, I'm not sure what they're called, but there's this, uh, it's a weird like uh, asthma thing that you get when you run. Uh, let me see if I can quickly type it up and let you guys know what it is. But I've had it in the last few days that I've been running because I ran home a couple of times from uh, where, where I work in central London to back in Stratford, which is like six miles and a bit, which has been quite cool. Uh, but I've had this weird cough that's been happening every time I've been uh, running, right? Uh, oh, there's one. It's called exercise-induced asthma. It's a narrowing of the airwaves in the lungs triggered by extraneous exercise. It causes shortness of breath, wheezing, coughing and other symptoms during after exercise. Now, the funny thing is, during the summer, I thought I used to get this during the summer when I was running a lot because in the summer, I, I stopped going to the gym. Uh, the gym doesn't have any air conditioning, no real uh, ventilation in there, and it gets really sticky. So I thought, you know, I was going to keep running outside because that's where I want to keep fit. But then when I started running outside, I'd get this weird, really wheezy tightness of the, of the chest, 
I couldn't breathe properly. All the symptoms I just mentioned there, and exercise induced um, asthma, and I thought it was to do with my allergies. I thought, oh man, I have to do with my allergies, but then during the summer, I didn't want to take my anti allergy tablets because they made me sleepy. And the ones that don't make you, and the ones that don't make you sleepy, for me personally, others uh, aren't as uh, don't work as well as the drowsy ones. So I was like, I was caught in a bit of a, you know, in a, between a rock and a hard place. But I just stole it through it, and just carried on, right? So I was just running in pain. Then it happened. Then uh, the other day, or the last few days, actually, so I've been running outside in the cold. I've still had the same sort of feeling. So you, sometimes it wouldn't be that bad if I warmed up, but for the most part, I'd still get that kind of wheezy, like, <gasps> even when I'm running, like, I'd still kind of get that kind of wheezy and sort of breath where I couldn't really breathe. Uh, my airways were kind of, you could, basically what, the, what it's saying, like, those, like, the airways in my lungs were kind of tightening up. They weren't as, as loose as they should be, or as wide as they should be, right? Um, and then when I ran back from home after work, I was coughing a lot. Like, I was just, like, coughing excessively when I got back home, like, I had like a fit of like 10, 15 minutes, just like consistently coughing. But it was that weird, really dry, heezy, like chest cough. So I knew uh, straight away that it was a cold. And then I kind of Googled it, which is probably the worst thing I could do. But, you know, I was I was, I was was happy that it wasn't anything uh, too vicious because you just don't really Google. Uh, I've got a cold in my... I've got, I've got a shortness of breath on my chest. So it tells you, you have, you're having a heart attack. Please go see a doctor. So it can get a bit, get a bit crazy. But luckily, this time around... That didn't happen. I was able to do it. I checked out, and it and it kind of. I figured out straight away that it was a uh, what do you call it? That that was the issue. The exercise induced um, asthma, and now luckily, 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 it didn't really come back with a vengeance that hard as I as I would have guessed it anyway. For the most part, so that was quite cool. Actually, no. I need to take. take let me take off the volume on the. On now can you hear me now okay cool they're done yeah new laptop so I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with the settings here but hopefully that should work but yeah so exercise induced asthma has been affecting me lately but i was able to run back home after work did six miles which is amazing saves you money during the week you have to pay for it or it's the car on the way back but you know i pay for both pieces it doesn't matter but that was quite nice it's a bit of a ball ache though running back home from central london man oh especially after work everyone's coming out of their offices and you're having to go, excuse me, excuse me, every two seconds. But you do get the, the, the jolt of energy that you get running in the streets after work is amazing. Like I ran probably the quickest I've ran in quite a while. I think I did a couple of seven a couple of seven minute miles. I think especially the first two, I was running through Old Street, running through Shoreditch, uh, running through uh, Bethnal Green, and then down to my lane, and then up, and then right down that road. I think it's a commercial road all the way down to Stratford. So I kind of did. I kind of did really well. I might take another route this time, but that's the route I'm familiar with on the bus when I run home. I tend to do that because I don't really like to want to take out my phone and run and try and look at the map because I know I'm going to stack it and end up kind of shoving the phone into my face. And my phone's already smashed as it is. So imagine all the glass shards that are scraping across my nose in the, uh, uh, in the evening. That's not a good look. So I usually I tend to run back the way I know on the bus. That's usually my, my easiest method to do it. Um, and it, yeah, it was pretty good, but I think I'm going to try and do it again and again. I'll hopefully will get, I was going to try and do it today. I might actually do it today, actually. If I can find, yeah, I might actually do it today after work. Because I was thinking of doing another, po I know actually I can't because I've got to do podcasts in the evening. So I'm not going to do it today after work. I'll do it probably on Thursday, which I'm probably not going to do again because I've got to do the music. But yeah, I'll do it again. Uh, most of the, um, yeah, and I enjoy it better than running, from when you're in the area, because you've got a destination, you know, there's way, I don't know how to describe it uh, mentally. It just works better than having to run six miles around the block in my area, because there's no real destination, right? I'm not really running to a place, and even if I run to a place, like, I can just take another way. But when you're running back from work, you, you kind of have a place you want to get to, you want to get back home. And um, yeah, that works out pretty well. I kind of did it in about 50 minutes, which is way, way, way above what I used to do it before. I think I did a 10k last time. I think in 45 or 44 minutes was my quickest 10k I did before, so I'm a bit off that, off that. But then you know I'm not as fit as I was when I was running, you know, like four or five times a week. I'm doing it now quite often, but not as often as I was doing it before. But I just want to quick, slowly but surely ramp it up and get back to where I need to get to. What else happened on the weekend? Oh, I DJ'd at Heathcote and Star on the Friday. That was fun as fuck. Um, it was like a last minute booking because they were putting together not last week booking actually it was a booking and I had to tie in with a new bill that they're trying to put together at Heathcote and Star I think they've sort of realised that the Fridays are usually kind of the most busiest days but you know there's like a massive roster of DJs there so they have quite a lot of people to choose from 
but fortunately they were nice enough to kind of choose me and say, hey, we want you to uh, kind of do the, the dinner thing because we think you've got a good vibe for it. And it worked out pretty well. Um, I kind of went into it a little, I kind of presented my back in a, in a bit because I kind of knew they, just, it, the crowd is, a, is quite varied compared to Tap East. It's like, you know, anywhere between 18 to 55, whereas Tap East is a predominantly a more of an adult crowd, more like, I don't know, let's say 25 to 45, right? Uh, Tap East for the most part in Westwood, Stratford. So this time around, I took my USBs and I took my controller with me just in case. So, but I played, I played mostly my USB. I played for basically the first three hours of my USB and then the last hour I just switched over and played on my controller. Um, USB wise, I felt better. I feel a little bit more comfortable mixing on the CDJs. Uh, the reason why, because I prepared. I guess it's like any, uh, like most fighters when they say, oh, are you ready for the fight? And some fighters always say they're as ready as they they're ready because they they know the amount of work they put into the actual fight itself, right? They've been training hard, and that's basically effectively what I did um, when it came to when it came to DJ and he got star. I put in the work, I organized my crates, I organized my playlist, I did all the same work I needed to do in order to get it where where it needed to be, and then it was just up to me to kind of perform on the day and make sure that I don't fuck up. So that was kind of fairly easy to do. Um, and yeah, I was happy with it, man. I thought I thought it went fairly well. I think everyone else was happy with my performance too. And yeah, it's just nice to get, you know, you I'm just getting more and more comfortable with it. Um, I'm understanding how to like read a crowd a little bit better. I'm understanding where to play certain tracks. I'm also showing a bit more of my personality now. I'm not just going in and playing like dad, dad's, dad's favourites and shit. Do you know what I mean? Like um, I'm going in with my little flair, trying to like show what I can do, what I'm into, the music that I like. Um, and yeah, man, it's been fucking great. One of the tracks actually that... Um, I recommend everyone check out. That's been getting quite a good response. I don't, I don't, I don't think a lot of people were were really onto it when it came out. Um, it's off of Lenny Kravitz's new album. I'll try to get the name of it now before I let you know. So Lenny Kravitz's new album came out a few weeks ago. And it's got a track on there that's been doing an absolute business for me. Well, I've been DJing lately. Everyone's been loving it, asking what the track is. So it's from his uh, new album called Raise, Raise Vibrations. And it's called Low. It's like the second track off the album. It's insane. It's really, really cool track. Um, it's it's it kind of reminds me of um, if you like uh, Majid Jordan, I, I gave you love away. Do, do, do. Now that kind of like discoy kind of like slow vibe um, track is fucking amazing. The track, the album itself is really cool anyway. Twelve songs, an hour and five minutes long. Um, really, really cool song. Uh, Johnny Cash, a kind of country music song, country uh, music inspired song is amazing too. Really shows Lenny Kravitz's uh, range. But yeah, that track low from Lenny Kravitz has been doing an absolute business for me. So I definitely recommend you check it out. Lenny Kravitz raised vibrations. That is out right now. What else happened on over the weekend? I think that's been it for most fighters. It's been fairly quiet. Uh, work has kind of started and kind of picked up a bit. Obviously, uh, the DJing stuff outside has been pretty decent. At the moment, still trying to see whether or not I'm, uh, I'm going to be getting books for New Year's Eve. I'm not sure if I am. I'm still waiting for a confirmation on that. Um, I'm, I'm a bit in two minds about it, really. Um, <coughs> I've never actually DJed during New Year's Eve, but I've DJed d- d- during like Halloween and other things like that. And it's usually never... Not never, I say it's, it's usually not worth the hassle. And if I hear, if I listen to, because sometimes, you know, there's not that many uh, podcasts out there that kind of cater to DJs, like, coming up, you know, right? You know, if you don't listen to RA, for the most part, there's no real podcast out there that's recommending, you know, what to do when you're, like, on the rise and trying to make your way in the industry, quote-unquote. But if I kind of uh, listen to what comedians say who are kind of, you know, similarly kind of um, entertainment field, you know, sort of solo person performing on the stage... They always say they try and avoid performing on those public holidays. Even if they pay really well, they try and avoid them because it's not worth the hassle. So I'm assuming it won't be worth the hassle and I'm assuming any last minute booking that I do get will be something that most people don't want to do. So I'm not too sure how to approach it. I'm not sure if I should go with it anyway because I'm an amateur. I'm a novice just so I can do it anyway and just say yes or to kind of like, you know, pull back a little bit and get be a little bit more selective and maybe wait for the right opportunity to come along. I don't know what to do at the moment so I'm going to try and figure that one out over the last over the next few weeks and see what the best kind of uh, methodology is I can do with that. Um, well, so I think that's about it mainly, isn't it? What else do I need to update you guys on? Um, DJing, doing a bit of that, doing a bit of this. 
And yeah, I think that's basically it. Um, I've got a bunch of topics I want to talk about when I come back um, later on this evening. So please uh, keep uh, tuned for that. You shall hear me talking all loads of loveliness when I come back on the other side. Um, for now, this is the episode number 120, Extra Zinger Show, a super short one, but, you know, we, we try to throw these in-between ones in there just to kind of, you know, not to fluff the numbers, but to kind of make sure everyone's updated with my whereabouts. I didn't give an update because I think those things are fucking gay. Um, I'll be back with regular schedule programming later on this evening, so wait for that and check your, uh, keep an eye on your subscription page for that one, right, Malaki? And I'll see you guys again very, very, very soon. Peace.